after you arrested Galena Clarkson, you had a run-in with the Clarksons. At least that's what it says in the report. Hey, aber dann hat Swery jetzt wirklich quasi parallel an drei Spielen gearbeitet im Grunde. Deadly Premonition 2, Hotel Barcelona und The Good Life. Weil an The Good Life, da habe ich ja schon, bestimmt schon über ein Jahr her oder sogar zwei Jahre, als ich da, dass ich da die ersten Bilder gesehen habe. What exactly happened there? Just a simple run-in, that's all. Nothing but a single phenomenon. Chasing hollow instances like that won't lead you closer to the truth. Truth doesn't work like that. A hollow phenomenon, which resulted in a mountain of corpses. <laughs> oh, Belle. We think we finally understand what you're trying to say. But don't be so voracious. How about another cup of coffee? We've still got a long way to go, you know. Das ist... ...als ob er mit mir reden würde, oder? <laughs> Witzig. Yes. It's coarsely ground, so there should only be... ...four teaspoons per cup. No more, no less. Next, the coffee travels from the funnel to the siphon. Simon, normally you only do surveillance in order to gather data, correct? Hiding microphones and cameras, sifting through garbage, wiretapping, shadowing, tracing credit card histories. You'll do whatever it takes to gather data in order to prevent crimes. That's how the FBI works. Daniel, thank you for following. Hi. Welcome. Uh, well, yeah, you're right. No reason in hiding it now, I guess. <laughs> Why do you ask? Southern Belle has adopted a very peculiar M.O. It's almost like she has a special power just like us. <laughs> You've been watching us this entire time, haven't you, Belle? window. Er hat sogar vorher noch gesagt, als sie zu der Tür gezeigt hat, dass alle Zimmer, äh, alle, alle äh, Wohnungen in dem Haus gleich geschnitten sind. Ich habe es auch gerade, ich habe ein paar Screenshots geguckt, äh, mir angeguckt von D4 und die Küche, in der äh, er jetzt gerade steht, Zack, die erinnert mich schon sehr stark, also die, die, die erkennt man auf jeden Fall sehr stark wieder. I don't need to answer that question. You came here on New Year's Eve, then spent 49 hours watching us until you returned to your hotel room last night. You observed us the entire time without sleep or rest. And you only ate once some pizza delivered by Simon. Aside from that, you never drank any water or relieved yourself. You simply sat there and continued to watch us. You have visions too don't you you came here solely to hear us talk didn't you but then why bother watching us for over two days beforehand you didn't come to talk with us you came because you wanted to see this apartment with your own eyes and because you're already convinced of something. Isn't that right? He who fights with monsters 
should see to it that he himself does not become a monster. And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. But I... Oh. Coffee. Thank you, my fairy. If you hadn't been paying attention, this coffee would have all gone to waste. The pus in our brains. It really has a way of interfering with our lives. Irgendwie kommt mir dieser Simon Jones Kerl Charakter so bekannt vor, als ob das ein echter Schauspieler wäre oder sowas. Tja. Aber kann er eher nicht sein. Aber der kommt mir so bekannt vor. This is friggin delicious. I thought I was gonna shit myself for a second there. Come on, Aaliyah, take a sip. Trust me. I'm not exaggerating here. I... I don't believe it. It's better than any coffee I've ever tasted. Of course it is. Coffee is a sacred drink. Coffee saved us. If not for its oracle, we would be on the other side right now. So I never forget to pay my respects to coffee. Especially at critical moments like this. Big black cumulonimbus clouds are in the sky. And that sound, thunder snow is coming. Ah ja, jetzt ist draußen der entscheidende Hinweis. Dann werden wir erstmal nochmal über das Foto und den Kerl reden. Why would an agent as skilled as you close the Lee Clarkson case without locating her body? Good question. Maybe we just weren't as skilled as you think back then. Isn't that right, my fairy? You reported the body as being stolen. Was that truly the case? Meaning? Meaning there's a possibility that the body wasn't stolen, but purposefully moved instead. Maybe someone ordered someone else to get rid of the body, or even store it in a specific place. But who? And for what purpose? In order to use the body for something else. You never considered that? Perhaps there's some connection between the frozen body and the fact that Saint Rouge is still being produced. Hey, Aaliyah, how about explaining yourself clearly so that even I can follow along? Someone extracted the ingredients to Saint Rouge from Lise Clarkson's body. That's what you're trying to say, isn't it, Belle? So that they could go on producing the inimitable drug without Professor R. W what? Drug addiction destroys people, physically and mentally. It makes them capable of doing anything just so they can get their hands on a fix. Abusing a corpse? That's nothing to an addict. And with your dependency, I suspect you might know just what that's like. Maybe we do. If you threaten to take this away from us, I might have to kill you both right here. And steal all your hundred dollar bills. 
Oh, spine tingling. Scary stuff, isn't it, my fairy? <laughs> <laughs> you, you sure got a twisted sense of humor there, Morgan. <laughs> Come on, don't glare at me like that, Aaliyah. I told you, I'm out of my element here, remember? This isn't the time or the place. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just really nervous. I mean, Morgan's a legend. And now he's right in front of us and things are all tense. I'm sure it'd give any normal agent a stomach ache. <sighs> Incidentally, Simon, why did you decide to stop working out in the field? Don't ask. It's a long story. I don't mind. We have lots of time, don't we? I could even make you another cup of coffee, if you like. <sighs> uh, fine then. I'll try to make it brief. See, I used to work out in the field. Even had my own partner. But we had a little rivalry that sort of ruined our relationship. It was over a woman, of course. You know how it goes. We fell in love with the same girl. At the same workplace, too. Then one day, the three of us went to go do a stakeout at a restaurant over in East Boston. I pretended to be a customer while my partner waited in the car, and she waited in the building across the way. Well, it only took a few minutes for my partner and I to lose our heads. We started engaging in this dumb contest to see who could impress her more. Things were looking bad, and I knew I was gonna lose. Then, something happened. Right in front of me, a customer starts choking on something. Her face was pale, froth at the mouth, the whole nine yards. I got up at once, but my partner stopped me. Didn't want us to blow our cover. So what did I do? I ignored him. Helped the guy anyway. I couldn't stand by and watch that. I couldn't help myself. Next thing I knew, I was a hero. The guy survived. The restaurant thanked me. And I'd even managed to win the heart of you-know-who. Felt pretty good, you know, one-upping my partner right in front of his very eyes. But that was the beginning of the end. A few days later, she and I went to go get some bubble tea at a cafe in Brookline. And a man comes up to me and said, I'm here to thank you on behalf of the person you saved in that restaurant. Feeling a bit cocky, I said, all in a day's work, my good man, and tried to brush him away. But he held out an envelope to me and said, My client broke three ribs thanks to the unnecessary Heimlich maneuver you administered to him. He wants you to ensure that he'll be able to get the proper treatment. I thought I'd save someone. But all I ended up doing is wasting a lot of my precious time wrapped up in an astronomically stupid court case. It also blew our cover, so our target found out about us. In the end, I was taken out of the field and banished to a meaningless job that anyone with half a brain could do. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Anyway, uh, well, that's what happened. Of course, I also lost the love of my life and went back to being a lonesome loser. And that's why I hate being out in the field. Oh, come on! I tell you all that and you're not even gonna say anything? That was... long, Simon. 
Hey, I warned you. I told you it'd be long. Oh. So lang war das eigentlich gar nicht. Agent Jones, I'm sorry for not responding to your story. It was just so bizarre. I wasn't sure what to say. Sorry that the greatest trauma of my life ended up being too bizarre for you. W what do you expect? All you ever talk about is pizza or hitting on women. Honestly, it offended me. I felt like I was listening to a teenage boy tell some misogynistic conquest story. Whoa, whoa, Aaliyah, hold on a minute here. Despite how I may seem to you, I am actually pretty popular with the ladies. And you know that co-worker of mine? She's the one who came on to me. Besides, I only told that story because a certain someone asked me to. It's what happens when you're a popular guy. Is this all some big joke to you? I'm really losing my patience here. You simply have yet to awaken to my masculine charm. Maybe you should try getting some more experience under your belt. Agent Jones, are you trying to get me to sue you for sexual harassment? <laughs> He's digging his own grave, isn't he, my fairy? Aw, oh, come on, Morgan, not you two. I'm sure a guy like you can tell why women might find me attractive. What's that supposed to mean? I just mean, you know, imagine it for a minute. A woman who you wouldn't necessarily call beautiful, yet still possesses some unique charm. You see women every now and then who you wouldn't mind spending a night or two with, right? And I'm like the male version of that. <laughs> Come on, you know what I mean. Some women just prefer a man who's a little below the norm. And they're usually with a different guy each time you see them. From straight-laced businessmen to gold chains and fake tans. They prefer buffet style, you know? Anyway, my point is, we've all got this special kind of sex appeal. I couldn't even keep track of all the sexist remarks you made just now. Hey, just cool it for a sec, would ya? We're having a guy conversation here. <laughs> this is all just strategy I'm using to try and loosen Morgan up. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Ominous. It's almost like a manifestation of the atmosphere in this room right now. Do you hear that thunder? Probably gonna snow soon. We're in Massachusetts. That's the norm for this time of year. Well, I'm not used to the cold. If possible, I'd like to finish this up before we get stuck in a snowstorm. Agent Jones, after we're done here, I. <sighs> Agent Jones, is something the matter? Snap out of it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. Do you? Then stop daydreaming. Okay, okay. I just... You just what? I just... Uh... My stomach's been letting some thunder loose, too. Thunder? 
The, uh... That coffee was just so good, it, uh... It what? We don't have all day here. The coffee was just so good, it, uh... <laughs> summoned forth a massive tsunami from within me. Excuse me? What is wrong with you? Now is really not the time for this. Right door at the end of the hallway. Thanks, pal. Ooh, hold on. You can make it. We can do this. It's not very far. We promise you. We did not put laxatives in the coffee. Coffee is a sacred drink, remember? Mm. Motherfucker. <laughs> There's no doubt that the report omitted information linking Morgan to the Clarksons. I need to get him to confess. Oh, yeah. That reminds me. There's a secret weapon in Agent Jones's briefcase. Mr. Morgan, I heard that you were always a smoker. Good night, Fallen Crusader. Did you ever wonder if that was the reason you contracted your illness? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. I'm just personally curious about it. Sometimes, people die in car accidents, regardless of how well they take care of their health. Other times, they slip on their bathroom floors and crack open their heads. <laughs> Isn't that right, my fairy? I'm not concerned with statistics. I'm just curious about you, right here, right now. We switched over from nicotine to this. It's less addictive. That's one step in the right direction, isn't it? Perhaps. If we're talking about withdrawal symptoms or physical dependencies. But it still seems like you're smoking too much at once. Honestly, it looks to me like you have a mental dependency. <laughs> Maybe. But so what if we do? Surely you know about gateway drugs, yes? When a person starts to use one drug, it becomes much easier for them to branch out and try other drugs as well. The first drug acts as the gateway that leads them to stronger substances. Oh, are you trying to say that's going to happen to us? No. I'm simply saying there's a possibility. Agent Jones probably won't be back for a while. Actually, now might be my opportunity to make some real progress. Have you ever seen this before? And please, don't say no. Son Rouge. The drug we once chased. What about it? Saint Rouge is still circulating. It's changed shape and its composition is slightly different now, but it's still very much alive. But only in a very limited part of Louisiana. You aren't surprised? Did you somehow know this would happen? Copies of another drug being circulated isn't exactly a rare case. But Saint Rouge is special. The inimitable Enigma Powder. The Origin. It has many names, and no one was ever able to copy it. 
We've also been trying to figure out what it's made from ever since it appeared. But it's impossible to analyze. After all, it appears to be made from common ingredients that can be found anywhere. But if you try to use those ingredients, all you'll end up with is a mundane hallucinogen like DMT. If you're lucky. No. Saint Rouge requires a special recipe. The original recipe, which someone's been guarding this entire time. Someone who survived the incident in Le Carré. Someone who survived the incident in Le Carré. Was ist da passiert noch irgendwas Großes, bei dem alle sterben oder sowas? Weil das klingt gerade irgendwie ziemlich so, als ob da alle oder die meisten irgendwie... Na, mal schauen. He read these over and over again. Like a prisoner rereading letters from his loved ones. But the last letter was delivered years ago, according to this postmark. That must be the last time he communicated with whoever was sending these. Yet, he left them out in plain sight. All this time. Immediately after they found Lisa's body, I went to go see Patricia. In order to interrogate her, of course. So you told us. But I was unable to meet with her. She refused to speak with you, didn't she? That's so like her. No. She didn't get the chance to. You see, she's gone missing. What? To put it more accurately, no one's seen her since the afternoon of the 28th. According to her employees, she shut herself up in her room for several months before she disappeared. But since that sort of thing happened often, they didn't think anything of it. On the morning of New Year's Eve, they noticed her window was open, and when they went up to check on her, she was gone. But no one knows how long her window had been open for. This is just my hypothesis, but on December 28th, a strange man visited Le Carre and was spotted near her mansion. That man must have found some way to lure Patricia into his car, the 89 Cadillac that he bought used. Then, the two of them drove north to Trenton where they boarded a train to Boston. They would have arrived here around midnight on the 29th, or perhaps early morning on the 30th. I believe this man is the same Billy Bishop whose name was previously recorded by the airline. So, what do you think of my guess? I'd love to hear your opinion as a former FBI special agent. Now we get it. We aren't persons of interest. We're the suspects. But what about our alibi? What alibi? I've had enough of your bullshit. You expect me to believe you haven't taken a single step out of this room? That Agent Jones is your witness? Surveillance cameras can easily be tampered with. Especially by someone like you, who knows all about how the FBI works. You're possessed by death. Go and take a look at your own face in the mirror. You look like the Grim Reaper. After you visited both Le Carre and Greenvale, you left a mountain of corpses in your wake. You can make all the excuses you want. I'm immune to them. Right here, right now, I want to know everything. You tell me the truth. Yes! You're good, Bill. Damn good. You're brimming with potential. Don't you think she's the perfect partner for our last dance? What do you say, my fairy? Don't you agree? She's good. So good. <sighs> what do you want to know? We've got nothing to hide. Go on. Question us. This is how it's got to be. Doesn't this remind you of something? You know what I mean, my fairy? <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>